Hi friends, welcome back. In the last chapter on static timing analysis, we went through the setup and hold equations of a flip flop and actually we derived the setup equations and the hold equations for each and every timing path present in the design. Now let's summarize few of the points. So the first point is for setup constraint, the data has to be propagated fast enough to be captured by the next clock edge. What does it mean? When the data is launched, so here, so here the data is launched at this clock edge. So the clock register one is the clock which is going to the capture flow. This is our capture flow. And this is our sorry, this is our launch flow. And this is our capture. So the data is launched at this clock edge and it is captured at the next clock edge which is this one. So the data which is launched at this clock edge should be fast enough so that it can be captured properly at this clock edge. So as we have discussed earlier to make sure that the data is captured properly at this clock edge the data at the D pin of the capture flip flow should arrive before the T setup time of the register to flop. So if this is the T setup then the data which is launched at this clock edge should reach at this point to make sure that this data gets captured properly at this clock edge. Okay. So this launch data should be fast enough so that it can reach before this point. So this is the first point. This constraint setup constraints also sets our maximum frequency. How the maximum frequency is depending on our setup constraints we will see in the next chapter. For now just remember that the setup constraint sets the maximum operating frequency of our design. Now if we have a set of failure that means our data is slow and it has not reached before this point. So if we have the set of failure what we can do is if the data is not reaching at this edge which it should it should reach before the this clock edge. If this is not reaching and if it is reaching after some time then what we can do is if we can extend this rising edge little bit right side for example if we if the rising edge happens here then if even if the data comes little bit late it still falls under the setup window correct and if it still comes before the setup window this data can be captured properly at this clock edge so to avoid the setup failures what we can do is we can increase the time period of the clock or basically we can decrease the frequency. So in order to mitigate the set of failures what we can do is we can always slow down the clock. So this is the one way. What can be the another way? If we don't want to slow down our clock then we have to make our this path delay faster. Correct? So to make this path delay faster we have to use high drive strength combo logic cells. So that is one another way to avoid the set of failures. Now let's see the hold constraint summary. So for hold constraint the data path delay has to be long enough so that it is not accidentally captured by the same clock edge. So as per the hold definitions the data at the D input pin of this capture flip flop should be stable for T hold time after the rising edge of the clock. So this is the launch flow of rising edge where the data is launched and the hold analysis is done at the same corresponding clock edge which is this edge. So when the data is launched at this clock edge or and, and for example let's say that this is the T hold time of our flip flop. Capture flip flop. Correct. So the data which is launched at this clock edge should not reach before the T hold time of the capture flip flop at the D input pin of this capture flip flop. 
that means this delay should be more than the t hold time of register 2 okay so this is independent of the clock period the hold equations as we have gone through uh, the hold equations in our previous chapter the hold equation is independent of the clock period and hence the hold check does not depend on the clock period of the capture uh, flip flop clock or the launch flip flop clock so if there is a hold failure the hold check does not depend on the clock period so if there is a hold failure unlike setup where we can increase the clock period to avoid the setup failure here in the hold conditions we cannot mitigate the hold failure by increasing or decreasing the clock period because the hold equation of a flip flop does not depend on clock and hence you can directly go ahead and throw your chip away that chip cannot work in the real scenario so this is the summary of the last chapter which was setup and hold timing equation derivation hope this is clear if you have any doubts please write down in the comment section also if you like the video please hit the like button and also please do subscribe this channel so that you will not miss the next such videos. Thank you.